I want to go to Delphi and channel at Delphi, at the Temple of Delphi, and in. see what happens, because usually if I go somewhere like that, somebody will come through. Spirit of the Western Way really talks about the conditioning programs that we've all been subjected to. And as I mentioned, well, you know, we all think we're free to make decisions, but why are you buying Tide detergent? Why are you drinking Starbucks coffee? Uh, you know, why do I know the jingle of a commercial that I used to listen to when I was a child? Because we're heavily conditioned. And Ananda would say, you think you have 10 or 12 programs active, you have thousands. And you know, why when we go into a house on the other side of the world is the cutlery drawer in exactly the same place? It's a really interesting thing, like why? It, why in Africa isn't the cutlery, cutlery drawer somewhere else? These are programs that we, why do our kitchens all look the same? Why do our living rooms all, everything we do is programming. So um, until we really understand that, you know, the school system, they say it takes 12 years to train a human mind. That's why we go to school for 12 years. We don't go to school for 12 years for the education. We go for 12 years for the mind training. Once you've been trained for 12 years, then you're trained. So it's very interesting that I started to channel after doing the course for 12 years. My mind had been retrained. I was now a different kind of person. So the, the spirit of the Western way is about our food systems, you know, like this idea of organic food and all of that kind of stuff. Well, in Jesus' time, everything was organic. Everything was local. Everybody bartered and traded. It was not a subject that he had to teach about, right? Because water was natural. There was no pollution. You know, it was not, it was not important. But now we're dealing with a weaponized food system that is toxic, highly toxic. So he talks about food now because we have to. You know, the systems that we're living with, whether it be Wi-Fi, whether it be, you know, vaccine programs, whether it be television, these are the systems of control and manipulation that we're living with. And the thing that I think the most important is that we have this idea that it's being done to us. But one of the great teachings of A Course in Miracles is you're not a victim of the world, you're a creator of the world. So when you're watching Dexter or when you're watching Grey's Anatomy, you are contributing to the frequency of death and destruction and nobody knows it. And I think if people knew that, they would take it much more seriously what they watch. Like when I, it's really hard for me to find a movie to watch now because I watch 10 seconds of a movie. I'm like, I can't watch this. It's too violent. I can't watch this. It's too negative. It's whatever it is, right? So I find myself like watching 80s and 90s movies because they have like, you know, good stories and out of Africa or, you know, the English patient, these epic, lovely movies, but they're, they have a lovely story. Yes, there's some scenes in there that are violent or whatever, but not to the degree of modern stuff. So um, the spirit of the Western way is about helping people see the conditioning programs. I think of someone like my mum, and if you asked her, are you, a free, are you free to choose what you want to do? She'd say, absolutely, I can do whatever I want. And she has no idea, no idea. And so therefore, when she's being manipulated, she has no idea that she's being manipulated. You know, she thinks the news is the news. <laughs> and um, I can see the consequences of her watching television for years. You know, she used to be a very radical kind of person with this whole spiritualism thing that I grew up with. And when I was a kid, um, I was one of the first girls to wear trousers to school back in the day. And when I was a kid, the girls had to wear skirts and the boys got in the winter got to wear pants. Well, one cold winter, it was like, I'm wearing pants to school. And my mum went and stood up for us in school and said, this is, this is not right. Why are the girls freezing? It's, it's England in the winter. It's really horrible. <laughs> and we changed the rules. And then when my brother was a teenager, um, he got his ear pierced and he worked for McDonald's. And they said, you can't wear an earring to work. And the girls could wear earrings. And my mom did the same thing. She, she was on TV, uh, a TV news station in Vancouver saying, this is wrong. 
how come the girls are allowed to wear earrings and my son can't? And, you know, so she was really on the front lines of quite radical things. And then she started to watch television. I, I can see how she's changed, how she's changed over the years. And it's a very interesting um, transformation to observe. It's, it's heartbreaking in a way, but I think it's part of that education that I get about, you know, this black box that everyone has in their house. It's an indoctrination device, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Western way is about, um, educating people, uh, what's been done to them, what's, what they're, what's being done to their children. Um, it's, yeah, I think what Jesus has said about the whole COVID experience and how he said, what you're seeing is what people truly believe in. So for example, uh, my ex landlady was in a yoga community and she was the only person in that yoga community that didn't take the medicine. And she said, I can't believe it. These are all healthy people who are like vegans and constantly focused on. She said, I couldn't believe what was happening. And what Jesus has said is, you see what people's true beliefs are. And this is a part of the ascension process that you have to see what you believe in. And it's the truth. Like when you get, cut, when you get pushed into a corner like everybody was a couple of years ago, you get to see what people truly believe in. And it's part of this revelation of understanding your inner world. Because most people would say, oh, I believe in this, but if you're pushed, oh, suddenly they're doing this, right? And he said people needed to see the truth. And that was actually the gift of COVID, was you got to see the truth of what people worshiped, what their idols are, and what they truly believe in. And if you look at it that way, you can see that it was beneficial for the evolution of human consciousness that people got to see what they believed in and you got to see what your friend's value system really was. And it's, it's, a, it's made it a more authentic place in a way, you know? So if you look at it from that way, it was like, oh, was that a bad thing? Actually, no. I think it made us stand, you know, we had to have the courage of our convictions. Um, I know I made a, a sent a post the other day and it said, you know, if you withstood this propaganda program that's been going for the last few years, you have, uh, you know, you deserve a standing ovation. You have really withstood the biggest propaganda program the world has ever seen. Well done. Playing out, the you truth know. of it's playing out now. You know, we're seeing all the evidence of what's really happening. And You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one that you know is Jesus. First of all, we want to thank you for this communication. It's very important right now that humanity hear the truth. The most important message right now for all of you is to know yourself. You are highly conditioned beings. You are made in the image of the divine. You have infinite power to create worlds. But if you are working from the wrong instruction manual, which you all are, then you are going to create a world that you do not want to live in. And this is the most important thing. Your mind is the creative device. Your connection to the divine is your natural inheritance. And you are functioning with interference. So the feeling of separation that people have, the feeling of isolation that people have, the fear of the future that people have, is because you live in a completely unnatural way. You live in an unnatural world. You aren't out in nature. You don't have extended families. You don't have support systems. You're isolated in your nuclear families and you don't understand why you feel fear because this is an unnatural way of living for humans. Throughout history and throughout your uh, natural evolution, you have had families, you have had uh, co-workers, you have had a community that helps you live so that if you get sick, your cousin or your niece or a neighbor will take your children with their children to the park or to the watering hole or to the corn grinding section of your village, whatever it is, your children were not isolated alone in a neurotic household. And this is what has happened in the last 100 or 200 years on your planet. So the first thing that people need to understand, and that is why your guides were insistent on talking about spirit of the Western way, is this idea of the indoctrinations that you've been through. And this idea that urbanization has really been detrimental to humanity. 
Now, this is a very, very difficult thing for all of you that live in cities, you live in apartments, you have mortgages, you have all of these things going on that seem to imprison you in the lifestyle that you have. And of course, that is by design. This is a very, very complicated system in which you find yourself. And every time you try and get out of it, you will bump up against a barrier that has been put there to prevent you from getting out of it. But the first thing we want you to do is to understand that you have guidance. You all have guides and teachers and they are giving you information all the time. People say, oh, I, I wish I could talk to my guides and teachers. We talk to you all the time through your feelings, through your dreams, through inspiration, through your creativity. We generally don't speak to you through words because it would scare the living daylights out of you. And this is why we work this way through this being because you are taught in your schools to listen to the lecturer at the front of the schoolroom, And so we know the indoctrination that you have been through. And so when we sit at the front of the room or we sit on the uh, uh, camera and we act as a teacher, you have a, you have a conditioning program that allows you to take in that information in that form. But your guides and teachers are communicating with you all the time through your feelings, through your inspirations, through ideas. But your conditioning programs speak louder. They speak louder because they were put in through intimidation and fear. And it's not until you start to break a conditioning program that you feel the intimidation and fear. So what you have are two streams of information coming through your consciousness that generate thoughts. Now, if you believe a thought, it generates a feeling. If you, if you believe a thought that is coming from spirit, that is loving, that is guiding you, you will be excited, you will be interested, you will be curious, you will be passionate. You'll say, I don't know why I need to do this, but it feels so good, I'm gonna learn the violin. I've always wanted to learn the violin, now is the time. It comes as a positive guidance. The conditioning programs always limit, they always scare, they are always uh, shutting down your inspiration. But most of you do not know that you have two streams of guidance. And so when you have an indoctrination program, we'll give you a simple one. Uh, you don't go walking in the rain in this society, for example. You get the feeling, oh, I'm gonna go for a walk. And then you look out and you think, oh, it's raining. And you feel that upliftment, oh, I'm gonna go for a walk. Then you look outside and you think, oh, it's raining. And you feel the drop in energy. It's a very subtle thing, but it's there. The inspiration is to move your body, to get fresh air. It doesn't, uh, spirit doesn't care if your hair gets messy. Spirit doesn't care if you get wet. Spirit wants you outside. It's healthy. There are free upgrades out there. Conditioning program is what? Keep you inside. And so you don't walk in the rain in your society, but you will feel that lessening the upliftment of I want to walk, the lessening of, oh, it's raining, I can't go. Well, actually you can. You can go for a walk in the rain, you can go for a walk in the snow, you can go for a walk in the wind, you can go for a walk in the cold if you've got the right clothes on. And that is how conditioning programs work. So really for the modern Western person, the only way that you can truly become empowered, the only way that you can truly become free is for you to understand how you have been trained and conditioned. And of course, the work that we brought through this being with the book, Jesus, My Autobiography, it, it is so important that you understand what I was and how I taught and what I was actually teaching. Because you believe in suffering and sacrifice. You think that to be a good person, you put your needs and wants behind everybody else. That is what you have been taught but the truth of the matter is, is initially when you are clarifying your mind, initially when you are reconditioning yourself, you have to be a little bit selfish. You have to think about what your preferences are. You have to think about what you enjoy. You have to think about what motivates you, what enlivens you, what uplifts you. If you listen to the teachings of the last 2000 years of the church that claims to be teaching my teachings, you will be told, no, no, that's selfish, that's self-centered. You should do what everybody else wants before yourself. And that leads to sacrifice, leads to resentment. Because you are not living your life. You have come here to live your life. You have not come here to live your mother's life or your sister's life or even your children's lives. 
You have come here to express yourself, the unique self that you are, the divine being that you are, uniquely created with unique desires, unique interests. And that is the gift that will transform the world, is you living fully yourself. But while you're conditioned, while you're limited, while you're constrained, you cannot bring the gift of your unique self to the world. This being was not influential when she was in fear before the transformation that A Course in Miracles wrought on her mind and her heart and her feelings and her self-understanding. But now she has influence, not as an ego self, not as an individual Tina trying to control the world, no, but the information that comes through her comes through her because she changed her mind. She came to see what was limiting. She came to see how hateful her mind was, how judgmental it was. And she transformed it day after day, week after week, year after year, for a decade or more. She transformed her mind. And what that has done is it has not only transformed her mind, it has transformed thousands and thousands of minds who in turn will transform thousands and thousands of minds. And that all came about because she saw that what she was doing wasn't working. It was not making her happy. It was not bringing her joy. And at some point in her life, she decided, I'm going to live the life that I want to live. And that is when she became teachable, when the sacrifice and the suffering stopped. But you are all indoctrinated into sacrifice and suffering through the Judeo-Christian teachings of your society. And it is not until you clarify your minds by doing the lessons of A Course in Miracles that you will truly begin to see how warlike your mind is, how judgmental your mind is, how fearful your mind is. And it is your mind that collectively is creating your dysfunctional world. This world is not created by God. It is manufactured by the thoughts, ideas, and feelings of humanity. This is a free will zone. You're allowed to do and think whatever you want. And you are seeing the results of doing and thinking whatever you want. So. Uh, Spirit of the Western Way is a wonderful book to start with. All of these books are supportive of your studying of A Course in Miracles. And if A Course in Miracles is too difficult for you, then read these books first. Let them sow the seeds of these ideas and help you understand what has been done to your mind. But what you must understand is this. Every time you're sitting in front of a commercial, every time you're listening to a violent newscast, every time you are allowing the images of war into your mind, you are doing it using your free will. You are choosing war. You are choosing bad food. You are choosing these negative ideas. You have free will and you are allowed to do whatever you want here. And you are going to experience the consequences of whatever you do here. Nobody will stop you. Nobody will interfere. You must choose love. You must decide to turn your television off and say, I am no longer watching war. I am not going to import war into my mind. And this is one of the ways that you are being uh, radically ma manipulated at this time with these wars. Because ego loves war. It loves death. It loves making another person guilty or another race guilty. And that is what is being utilized at this time. The most radical thing you can do at this time is to choose love and to shut down the indoctrination programs that come through your media systems. If you love social media, uh, curate your uh, feed. Follow those that are teaching A Course in Miracles. Follow people who are dancing. Follow people who are creating. Follow people that are helping you eat healthily. You can go on social media, but curate your feed and understand that you can use it as a tool for love and uh, the ascension of humanity. So uh, what is the most important reason now? Um, uh, what is the most important lesson for Westerners right now? Understand that there is a powerful propaganda machine at work. And if you don't own your mind, somebody else will. That is our answer.